ओके 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 सो वेलकम टू बिलाविड ऑल आर ऑनलाइन ऑडियंस एज वेल इफ यूर इन बॉम्बे प्लीज कम एंड फेलोशिप यू फाइंड अस ऑन फेसबुक आर हैंडल इज एट बिलाविड सन्स ऑफ गॉड एंड सो वील टेल यू वे वी फेलोशिप एंड यू आर मोस्ट वेलकम टू कम एंड ज्वाइन अस ओके सो टुडे इज गोट बी एन एक्साइटिंग टाइम I'm going to share about sonship. What sonship is? Because some people think sonship is some new doctrine, and uh, you know the simplicity of what the gospel is. Sorry, I'm going to try and make it tight. Uh, so I'm going to share through scripture. So for the ones who are on our group already, I've sent you a PDF file so you can open it up so you can see it. If it's not, it'll be on the screen, but you can go through it. Um, so you know, a lot of us came. through religion right like i came also especially in our culture we have so many religions so you come out of religion and before that i was worshiping an idol okay and so you can get born again you come into the kingdom and then again you start worshiping jesus like an idol and not realizing it so you were doing religion before in whichever uh, you know where, wherever you were and then you come into christ and again you start seeing him as some sort of your understanding of him can be some sort of just like a, an idol in your mind and then you start praying to him like that and if you're one of that at some point you've got frustrated or at some point you've you've got fed up and you sit and you're like you know i have i've been asking and asking and asking and nothing is happening and it's probably worn you out because you're in religion okay and um you know i'd like to say that in heaven there is no religion in heaven there is no christianity all religion is man made including christianity okay the gospel is a father and son relationship the simplicity of that and it is sonship okay and um, <clears throat> we're going to take i'm going to tell you a little story uh, it's a it's an illustration and not, it's not from the bible but the reason i'm going to share this is so that you understand this uh it's it's going to get you to see yourself in a in a different way okay so just um just imagine bring on your child's imagination in you so imagine first um <clears throat> imagine that there's a lion and let's call him papa lion okay and papa lion gave birth to two cubs small cubs right is that what you call baby lions cubs okay and so there were two brothers okay two small cubs one cub um grew up with him had a little understanding with the father spent a little time and then suddenly one day a hyena comes and takes this cub away and even before he could mature in his relationship with his father suddenly this hyena has taken this cub away and into the hyena's land and now this cub for the longest time he grows up in in the land of the hyenas and he starts hanging around with the hyenas and after some time the hyenas because he spent so much time like imagine spending say 10 years with the hyenas and i don't know what the life of a lion is the full life of a lion but he spent all his life in the hyenas and he grew up among the hyenas and the hyenas messed up with his mind he got his identity from the hyenas because he is roaming around with the hyenas whatever they 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 did or they ate he got his same identity from the hyenas and here this king he is supposed to be the king okay lands up living like a slave because he is among the hyenas okay and now there is another there is another cub right his brother the lion had the papa lion had two sons okay so this one son is in the land of the hyenas this other son has grown up with the, with the father and all his identity all of that time has always been with the father and this one has an identity of a king even as he's growing up because he's hung around with the father that's who he is the king and now the father tells the papa lion tells this son son go and bring your brother home go and find him and so this this lion okay who's grown up with his father now goes to the land of hyenas pays a very heavy price and brings his brother his brother back home now this brother comes back and now at first when he comes back into the land of his father and now he's suddenly out of the hyena land and now he's looking around and he's seeing that things are so different here i don't have to run after 
to get my food suddenly it's at the table because i am the king and now he's 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 finding everything new and first it's a wrestling because he cannot understand it because he so long lived and been brainwashed by the hyenas but even as the son this brother comes back home and then he starts hanging around with his this other brother and starts looking at him that he's just like him like he never was one of the hyenas he's got the same nature he's got the same fur and he looks at his father he looks the same way we are all part of one family there is no distinction and even then he starts roaming around the kingdom and starts looking at the other people that are part of his father's family he starts cultivating a relationship and after some time even as he's hanging out and the father simply tells him why don't you just hang around with your brother because even as you hang around with your brother he's going to tell you who you really are and it's a rest that he gets and now suddenly the whole hyena identity gets out and now he rests in who he really is he's coming back home okay but what i want you to see were all three of them were the same species the papa lion had two sons one son goes and comes back but they're all part of the family same species okay there is a there is a culture or there is a you know where we um, a lot of the church like looks at jesus as as god but son of god means god a lion will give birth to another lion a son the father through the son if you call yourself a son of god would mean same species so sometimes you can you can think when you say father father but in your mind you still look at him as god okay the reason why i've taken this example is because that's what actually the gospel is okay and this is just an illustration that i did okay um <clears throat> can i get a can someone hand me a cup from behind just one cup just a cup and then i'll get into the word i forgot to get it with me okay so everything if you look around you if you look around you there's a chair and the chair was made so that you sit on it the chair is not made as a show piece okay there's a podium here and the podium is made so that i can keep a book if i sit on this podium because it's not made for a podium the podium is going to fall the podium is going to feel frustrated at some point okay now imagine yourself like this cup now if i put pens in this cup it's weird because it's not really that's not why i made the cup it's not and it's after some point you're going to get frustrated and this cup is not going to feel full and dry is because i know i'm the creator i didn't make it to put pens in it but then this cup suppose someone gets i get water okay can you open this and now i place water in this and now the cup is going to feel fulfilled because i made it to hold water and now someone's going to drink out of it and even get more fulfilled because in the very purpose of it being fulfilled it can become a life giving spirit to somebody else and bless something else cuz that's the purpose that i made it for okay and if it's without purpose that's when it's dry now let's see your purpose you and i were made to be loved to be in a relationship and anywhere if you're out of your purpose that's where it gets dry that's why one gets fed up that's where there's just you're angry and all of that bitterness comes in is because you haven't found your purpose yet or what you were made for okay now let's read let's read ephesians 1 4 5 okay i put it up on the screen you can also look at your notes blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in christ where do you come from just as he chose us that means selected us in him before the foundation of the world that means even before the world was laid he has chosen you he has preappointed you before the foundation of the world why that you should be holy that word holy means sacred set apart holy 
sacred and without blame without blame means without guilt another word in uh, in greek is sinless that you may be sacred and sinless before him in love having predestined us predestined that means marked us out beforehand so if you are hearing me today you've been marked out beforehand you've been appointed beforehand predestined us to adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved do you know this adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself it means in greek it also reads as a son into the divine family as a son just like that lamb went the the lion went the cub went adoption as sons back into the divine family you have to see jesus as your older brother i know he is many other things but if you don't start seeing him as a brother because then you won't see yourself as another son and we both have a common father because the god of jesus is also my god the father of jesus is also my father same species and so what does it say here he's predestined us he had predestined us as adoption as sons by jesus christ to himself in greek i'm just reading what it reads as a son into the divine family to legally make a son to legally make a son so you become a son of god by coming back into the family of god okay by which he made us accepted in the beloved that's what your identity is that's what that cup is you're called beloved made to be loved beloved means this is what beloved means a discriminating affection which involves choice and selection a discriminating affection that means in all he calls you beloved that's why you can go out in the world and you see preferential treatment that you get but some may not we get the ballroom not all but we get the ballroom we did we ask for the ballroom no we asked for the restaurant <laughs> but the lights went out <laughs> so we get the ballroom okay preferential discriminating affection i'm very sorry but you are the beloved by choice and it had nothing to do with you you were appointed and you were chosen to be the beloved okay so now let's see so what is the simplicity it's a father and son relationship that's what you are so let's look at the fall okay we're going to see how and then i'm going to draw out some things for you okay genesis 2 genesis chapter 2 now i've written some verses down y'all all know the fall right so god created the sun the moon the stars everything and the dot and then god created man And then it says Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul man became a living soul and the Lord God this is verse 21 caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh the, instead thereof and the rib which the Lord and the rib which the lord god had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and adam said this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall become one flesh verse 25 okay and now it says that when he looked at her <clears throat> it says and they both were naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed so this word naked we've done this before but i'm doing it again in greek uh, in hebrew it reads as arom that means when adam saw his wife he saw her as absolute open meaning transparent there's nothing untoward about it so when he was seeing her that means with some sight that he saw her he did not see anything amiss he saw her as absolute okay so this is the word arom in hebrew now after the fall now the serpent comes tricks 
right? There were two trees, tree of knowledge of good and evil and tree of life. And what had the father said? Don't eat out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil because the day you eat out of it, you're going to die. So what did Adam have to do? He just had to listen to his father's voice. But what happens? He gets into reasoning. He starts thinking for himself. Oh, let me be my own father, right? And so he starts reasoning and the serpent comes, tricks him. And now he partakes of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the minute he partakes of it, what happens? Death comes in. Okay? And this is what it reads. It says in Genesis 3, 7, And the eyes of both of them were opened. The eyes. And in, in Hebrew, it says the sight. The sight of both of them were open. And they knew. That word for knew is awareness. And they knew that they were naked. Now this naked is... Erom, E-R-O-M. And when you look this up in Hebrew, it translates as barrenness. So did Adam have a sight before? Yes. And that awareness was something that he was roaming in, an awareness that he could not see, but he could see everything complete, everything whole, everything transparent. That means there was nothing amiss about it. And then suddenly, after he partakes of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what happens? His awareness one awareness goes and he awakes to another awareness. And that awareness is that of barrenness and lack. That means he came out of one realm and went into another realm of hyenas. Let's say that. And what had God given? God had given this whole world. He had given us dominion, right? In fact, when the serpent came, the Bible says that Adam had dominion over the fish of the sea, of the birds of the air. He could have really just taken that, uh, uh, had his dominion over the serpent, but he didn't take it. He had it. So what happened is, and before the fall, Adam was calling, was calling, uh, God brought all these creatures and he was giving it a name. And why did he give it a name? Because through name comes relationship. That's where you have names. If Sheetha doesn't have a name, I can't have a relationship with her. Because she has a name, now I can identify with Sheetha. And so, God, uh, you know, he brought all the animals and Adam started giving them names. And so it was, is to bring everything into relationship with with Adam, okay? And so what happened after the fall? He comes into another awareness. One eye shuts, another eye opens. And this whole world was given to Adam for dominion. But you know, it says that whoever you obey, that one slave you are. So who did he obey? There was God's voice and there was the devil's voice. And because he obeyed the devil's voice, now basically he's saying, you own me. And so he goes into the land of the hyenas. And now his entire life, imagine a father has lost his, his precious. He's gone to the land of hyenas. And now these hyenas are telling him who he is. And he gets his whole identity, calling bad good. When he was a king, given dominion. Okay? And so what is the, the uh, you know, so people come in and sonship is about a relationship with the father. It's not even... People have made Christianity. And, it's, and in our culture, I can see it evident is because people, you know when we say don't pray, and it's not about prayer, it's about relationship. And the kingdom works in a certain manner. And so just as the son, this lost cup, comes back home now through Christ, his brother brings him back home, all the father wants to do is now wake up to this realm of where you came from. I'm opening up your eyes. And do you know, son my dear cub, that you never have to run after your inheritance like the hyenas taught you. Here it's added to you. But what I want you to do is start waking up to who I made you now, to your real nature. And my heart is that, do you not see my other son? And then this, this other cub looks at his brother and is see like his brother's nature is so different. But I've been taught something and that's the wrestle, right, coming in. And even as he's submitting to his older brother, his older, this lion brother, he is waking up that, yeah, I'm just like him. My real nature is this. And that's what's called renewing the mind. And you're coming back. So what happens, we're living in a world and we want materialistic things. And for all the materialistic things, when you come back to the kingdom, the father says, or the papa lion says, that in my kingdom, you don't, have to run. You don't run those things because you don't earn them. They are given as an inheritance. They are yours. I'll give them to you. What I am more interested is having me in you because you were brainwashed by the hyenas. Okay? That's the simplicity of what sonship is. 
That's what Jesus did on the cross. But it's not like this lion coming back home and now worships this other lion like he's God, forgetting that they're same family, brother, another brother, same father. Are you understanding? Okay, now let's look at the fall. Okay, so what happened? Adam's one eye shut, awareness shut. And he came into an awareness of something else. Another eye opened up. Okay, now let's look at, <clears throat> let's go ahead. So what happened to you? Now I'm going to read these three scriptures and then I'm going to illustrate it out to you. Okay, so let's say there are three. I'm drawing this out and we'll have this board on. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay. So, so before the fall, okay, let's take this mark, oh, the red. So what did Adam look like before the fall? Now, this is just an analogy. Okay, I've drawn this before, but we are going to do it again. This is Adam. So he's a three-part being. Uh, sorry. What am I doing? Can you understand? Uh, sorry. Okay, so now this is spirit, your soul. It says that when God breathed life, he became a living soul. And this is your body. Now, Adam, before the fall, had dominion, right? The father is teaching him things. And so he's bringing the animals and he's walking in some sort of dominion way before he sinned. So he was active. He was doing all of those things. Do you see when Jesus was, was walking on the water and all the sea and the winds were obeying him? He was pretty much like an Adam, what Adam should have been like or what you and I should have been like in this world where you're over all of the laws, okay? And so this is a spirit, his spirit, soul, and body were all one, meaning in same alignment. Okay, and where was he getting his lessons from? This was in dominion. This is one, this is two, and this is three. That means it follows, it follows suit. Are you understanding? His spirit is in dominion. Now what happens, okay? What happens when he sins, when he partakes of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? This is what happens, okay? The Bible says, I'm going to read it out, but I'm going to explain it first and then read it out. His spirit died. So Adam, his whole spirit died. His spirit died. And now because his spirit is dead, this one is no more in dominion. Okay? And what starts happening now? It says the body also died. That's why man started dying. Death comes into, where does death come in? Where is the law of sin and death? It says, the Bible says it's in our members. Okay? This body gradually started dying. And this soul, this soul was from the knowledge he had taken, what had he eaten? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. This soul gets completely destroyed. That's what the hyenas did to this guy. And now, Adam starts living this whole realm. He came into another realm. He came into another awareness. Okay? It started being like this. So let's say this is no more one. Now this is one. Or this is one. And you, everything that the body is telling, everything that the environment is telling, he starts taking orders from here. That means a sensual man. You know when the Bible says a sensual man does not, a, a natural man does not understand the things of God? We talked about it in Take No Thought. What is it? A sensual man is the one who starts going with what he's seeing. So why did he run and hide? Suddenly Adam sees barrenness and he goes and hides. The first thing, guilt has come in, that he's done something wrong. His awareness opened up to this realm. So there were two realms. He steps out of one realm and he goes into another realm and now he cannot see this realm anymore. And this realm, this is the law of sin and death. This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil that the whole world lives in. Or 
another way, when we say in our culture, we fell into a karmic cycle. So you do good, get good, do bad, get bad. And this is like the cycle that just man lives in. In our, in our understanding, we call it karmic cycle. And there were patterns, and we went into all of those patterns. At some point in this, death just started coming in. So before, man used to live long, but progressively, the body started dying. Are you understanding? And all your knowledge, all of, all of Adam's mind, or all of the seed that came out of Adam, started getting corrupted by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Because the tree of knowledge of good and evil leads to death. So what happened to you and me? We came, we came out of, out of, we were predestined. Cho God has chosen us in him. But you came and you took on a body. You came from somebody, your mom or whatever. And then you grew up and then all you've been fed and you went to school and they fed you the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You grew up, you go, even if you don't want to, it's because sin is in the flesh, is in the blood. And so at certain times, your mom has some sickness or you get that sickness. Or your father has a sickness, you get that sickness. And hereditary flows is because Adam sinned, sin entered the world. So sin is not something what you do, it's what Adam did. And so it came into bloodline. And so this spirit was no more in dominion. We were taking all orders from what our sensory realm tells us. And so that it is. We listen to the news and so what they say is the truth. We listen to our teachers and what they say is the truth. We look at science and what they say is the truth. And everything comes from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It'll tell you at some point, eat sugar, sugar is, uh, don't eat sugar, sugar is bad. After 10 years, they might say sugar is good for you. It all comes from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? And Adam, man, fell into this. And so now Jesus, to bring you out of this cycle, imagine his father's sons lost. So let me read, let me read those. Uh, let, let us read these three scriptures, okay? Man's spirit died. Let's read Ephesians 6, uh, Ephesians 2. And you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins, in which you once walked. So what happened? You were spiritually dead. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan. Who are we influenced by now? We were supposed to be through Papa's kingdom, the lions, but now we went over to the kingdom of the hyenas. Who rules here? Satan. And so now this little cub, you, think that he is your father. And we were ruled by him. We got his identity entity from him. All your awareness is from this other realm. Okay? So look at this. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, Satan. The spirit who now is at work in the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit, and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. But God being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins, he made us spiritually alive together with Christ. For by grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from God's judgment. And he raised us up together with him when we believed and seated us, seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ, in Jesus Christ, but providing for our redemption. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and given eternal life. Through faith, and this salvation is not of yourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not a result of your works, nor your attempts to keep the law, so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for his salvation. For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art created in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Look what it says. Reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, 
ready to be used for good works which God prepared for us beforehand, taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. You were spiritually dead and now Christ comes and replaces you back into position. I'm telling you all the inheritance is coming to a son who is in position. So if you're praying, 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 that is religion. And we'll talk about it. I'll show you what that is religion. And nothing will happen and you'll keep praying for another 10 years and nothing will happen because you see him as an idol. You have to start seeing yourself as part of a family. And inheritance will follow you even as you take your position. Do we know that amazing testimony that came that Sarah shared, which I shared it on the group? This is a lady whose son has left her. She doesn't even know where the son has gone. And even as she's hearing, do you know what's happening every time you're hearing the word? You're coming into position without even knowing it. That every time you're subconsciously casting that care out and you're not worrying now. Now you know that you're loved. You see yourself as a son. It's not you wake up and say, I'm a son, I'm a son. That's how you get into position. You don't. <laughs> You're born a son. All that I'm doing, all that this cub realizes when he comes, he first is trying because all the hyenas have told him he has to get everything and he has to work for everything and now he begins to rest. Now, the more he's hanging out with his older brother, he'll realize he's just like him. There's no difference. The older brother takes him in front of the mirror, they both look the same. And even as he starts wrestling and starts resting in who he is, the father is the most happy because you're no different from my, your other brother. You both come from me born of me and this inheritance will be added but I'm more interested in your nature coming forth my nature coming forth in you because you're born of me and how I have been hurt to see that your whole identity was destroyed by the hyenas and so even as she's hearing hear, hearing this word take no thought cast your cares and she's just amazed and she's telling me she's just hearing she's just not worrying about the situation anymore this son who is lost for two years picks up the phone and calls her and not just calls her, has a change of heart. How did that happen? I'm telling you, your position is the most important. The devil cannot touch a son who knows he is seated. He is a son. He is a lion. And so even as he's taking that, she's coming in that position, yeah, I have nothing, it's all under my feet. At some point, what happened? Maybe something was talking, he had to leave. The devil had his hands off the son cannot and this guy has come and comes back and how did this happen instantly so now is this lady may have been praying for two years and pray 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 and you think God is not hearing God is like it's not a prayer problem first of all I'm your father stop looking at me as God Jesus on the cross he only said once my God my God that was on the cross he never referred to God uh, his father is God okay everything changes we are sons and so even as she's casting her care, she doesn't even know that she's coming in, she's resting, she's taking a position as a son, and there, whatever held him captive, it took one thought, and the son has come back home. Instantly. I told you last week, you will give me testimonies, and there will be a shift if you start doing, resting, and we got it instantly. Everything is about position. You read the whole new, new covenant, it's all about placement. It even says here, when it says that he's, he's given you adoption as sons, in, Gre uh, in Greek it says placement as son. It's a placement. And in every area of your soul that was destroyed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that looks chaos, but that's what it is. You, in, in that area, you're coming into position of being seated. You're resting, you're coming into some sort of rest in that area. And that's what's happening because the son is seated at the right hand of the father. So what happened before we were born again? Our spirit died. So Adam's spirit died. And so now his soul, now it's all he knows is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And now it's filled with that. His soul is destroyed. And now his body follows, follows it. And so now he goes into a carnal realm. What he sees is what it is. So now let's look at 1 Peter 1.3. Man's soul got destroyed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, this is the karmic cycle that the whole world is in. 1, <clears throat> 1 Peter 1 3. Blessed, gratefully praised, and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant and boundless mercy has caused us to be born again. 
that is what is born again me that is to be reborn from above spiritually transformed renewed and set apart for his purpose to an ever living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead born anew into an inheritance which is imperishable beyond the reach of change and undefiled and unfading reserved in heaven for you nothing can steal your inheritance the way you get your inheritance is by position not by prayer by position okay and what is position what is your position is a position of rest that it is finished look at this reserved in heaven for you you are being protected and shielded by the power of god through your faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time in this you you rejoice greatly even though now for a little while if necessary you have been distressed by various trials so that the genuineness of your faith which is much more precious than gold which is perishable even though tested and purified by fire may be found to result in your praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ though you have not seen him you love him and though you do not even see him now you believe and trust in him and you greatly rejoice and delight with inexpressible and glorious joy receiving as the result what is the final outcome the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls what part of you got born again after you got born again is your spirit man what part of you is getting saved is your soul man that means your mind will emotions all of this okay that's what is getting saved and that's where christ is getting formed in us that's what's called believing in simple words that's what's called renewing the mind because this part of us is conforming to our spirit man okay and now let's look what happened to the body after the fall romans 14 for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin but what i am doing i do not understand for what i will to do that i do not i do not practice but what i hate that i do if then i do what i will not to do i agree with the law that it is good but now it is no longer i who do it but sin that dwells in me what happened to the body where did the law of sin and death come in the body okay for i know that in me that is in my flesh nothing good dwells for to will is present with me but how to perform what is good i do not find for the good that i will to do i do not do but the evil i will not to do that i practice now if i do what i will not to do see this it is no longer i who do it but sin that dwells in me what happened to the body sin came in and so paul is saying yeah i want to do with my mind something but then oh i can't and i see i'm doing exactly the opposite that means where is the law of sin and death look was 21 I find then a law that evil is present with me the one who wills to do good for I delight in the law of god according to my inward man means priya i want to do but i see another law in my members that means in my body in my members means in my in my body warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members so after adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil what happened spirit died soul is destroyed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil that's what happened to us okay people told us at 40 this will happen at 50 this will happen if you eat this this will happen all of this tree of knowledge of good and evil and what happened to your body the sin came in the flesh in the blood that's why the law of sin and death is here that's why there's a church generation that wants people to get holy in the flesh it is not possible because the law of sin and death you'll need a new body it cannot be possible our holiness is by faith spiritually given it's a gift okay if you want to get holy you have to die and go to heaven it's not possible in the flesh this law is active okay and um, that's why jesus came and had to die in the flesh so that to fulfill your my requirement of holiness in the flesh okay so see this <clears throat> oh wretched man that i am who will deliver me from this body of death so now sin enters spirit died soul messed up with the tree of knowledge of good and evil the body has death now it's going to die at some point it is going to die 100 years 200 years it will die i thank god through jesus christ our lord so then with the mind i myself serve the law of god but with the flesh the law of sin okay now i'll show there's a way out of all of this what happened after adam fell all of creation was given to adam 
suppose I write an entire estate on your name, not only this house, but all the employees with it and all everything with it and I've given it legally to you and the land and the horses and everything. So now if I give it to somebody else, does, just, 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 does the house go or the horses and everything with it? Because it is legally given and now I'm giving it all to you. Sometimes handovers of the company are like that, right? With the employees, with everybody. So what happens? What happened to Adam? The minute he fell, even creation fell with him. You know, the Bible says that in that time that the wolf and the lamb, okay, in Isaiah, if you can open it, Isaiah 11 verse 6, the wolf will live with the lamb. Before the fall, if you read, it says that God said that I've given every herb, herb to the animals. That means they were not, the lion was not supposed to eat the lamb. They were vegetarians or they were not eating. They were not killing each other. It happened after the fall. All confusion, everything went out of order. Everything went whack after the fall, okay? And uh, it just got messed up. And that's why it says, now see this, Romans 8, 19. For even the whole creation, all nature, waits eagerly for, that word in Greek is for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration and futility, not willingly, because of some intentional fault on its path. No, it was because Adam sinned. But by the will of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will also be freed from its bondage to decay, that means it's dying, and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the sons of God. For we know that the whole creation has been mourning together as in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only this, but we too, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, a joyful indication of the blessings to come, even we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the sign of our adoption as sons, the redemption and transformation of our body at resurrection. For in this hope we were saved by faith, but hope, the object of which is seen, is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience and composure. Okay, so what happens now? Okay, so let me, see, let, me, let me draw this. Can someone hold this a bit? Okay. Sorry. Can you see it? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about, so what happened? I'm gonna make it small so I don't occupy so much of this place, okay? So now God, the father loses his son and this whole realm, he's come from one realm, he's gone to another realm, okay? And now his children don't even know that sin is there in them. Sin is in the body, but they don't know that sin is in the body. So now how does a father still govern his child? So now why was the law given? Was the law meant to be kept? So let's look at why the law was given. Let's read Romans 7, the purpose of the law. So what shall we say about all this? Am I suggesting that the law is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that gave us clear definition of sin. For example, when the law said do not covet, that means don't take what belongs to somebody else. It became a catalyst to see how wrong it was for me to crave what belongs to someone else. It was through God's commandment that sin was awakened in me and built its base of operation within me to stir up every kind of wrong desire. For in the absence of the law, sin hides dormant. So now man, God's children, started saying that no, we, are not, we don't have sin in us. So the law was given to act up sin. That's why some churches, if you preach law, they'll just end up sinning more. The law was given to only rise up. Have you ever taken uh, yeast? I don't know if I'm pronouncing it rice. And it rises up. It makes something just rise up. Or you put something, you know, in the, in, the, in the sink. And then you put those little things and all the dirt just comes up. So it's like the law was given to just show man that, look, there is sin. That it needs to be dealt with. Okay? Let's look at Galatians 3.19. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions. Because that means we missed it. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. Till the seed, God is all about the seed. 
the seed, the seed, Adam's seed. And then it's about the seed coming in, the seed. That's why Noah's ark was not about God destroying. Go, Noah's ark was about God destroying what's not the seed. What happened before the fall was the, the fallen angels started mating around with the sons of God. Okay? And it came, there was another race that came about, a giant race. And so Noah's ark was about destroying all of them. God is about the seed. The seed. Okay? And so what happens? Look at this. <clears throat> it was added because of the transgression still the seed should come to whom the promise was made and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator does not mediate for one only but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, truly righteousness would have been by the law. That means something that you do. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would be afterwards be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. It was like God saying, okay, let me give my children some just regulation, some things. So oh, this is wrong, this is bad, this is wrong, this is good. And just like a, to put you, just keep you in line. But if he knew that you would be, he wouldn't have had a lamb offering even in, the, in that time. Do you know why he did that? Why the lamb offering was there? Because no one could get right, in their own right by their own flesh. That's why even in the Old Testament, there was always a way out. There was an offering, the blood offering. Bring a lamb. And it's, the, it's the, um, the righteousness of the lamb, the innocence of the lamb that gives you righteousness. Okay? So why was the law given? It was a tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith, but after faith has come, that means after Jesus has come, we are no longer under tutor. We don't need this teacher anymore. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are heirs, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay, chapter 4. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so we, when we were children, when we were in the land of Hainas, were in bondage under the elements of the world, under the prince of the air, under Satan. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, that you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Jesus Christ. Why was the law given? A, to show that you have sin. That my children have now been, become a slave to sin. To rise up sin in you. Why was the law given? To keep like a tutor, just till the seed and the prophets are prophesied and prophesied. And that seed, oh, it's going to be Jesus is coming for Emmanuel coming from Nazareth and all of these words and that seed comes one day in Mary. And that's why it says in Mary, born of a woman, born, uh, born of a woman, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth a son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those under the law till that seed comes in her. And when that seed now has come into her, now Jesus comes, now I'm no more here. I don't need these tutors anymore because now has come the time for me to get redeemed and come back home to my father. So it was a journey. So the law was just like a navigator to keep you in check. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But still, there was still the offering. Even in the old. If the law was good enough, there wouldn't be any offerings. Lamb offerings, blood offerings in the Old Testament. Okay? And so you've come back. And so the purpose of the law was just to show up sin. But when the real one has come, you're not under the law. You know, you tell children, don't play with knives. You don't tell adults. It says that when you were a baby, you needed the laws. But now when you've come home, matured son, the son is just coming and knowing identity. The last thing you need to do is take the son and still tell them he lives in a land of hyenas. Oh, hyena is still your father. 
No, all he needs is reinforcement that he's back home, that he is just like his brother, that they're all part of the same family. And if the father, the other brother, and the young one, they all go and look in the mirror, they all look lions. Same species. All sons of the same father. Okay? What is the cross? So what is the cross? It's not Jesus going on the cross. It's not Jesus dying for your sins. What is the cross? He, he went, he died for my sins, but it is identification. So if you don't identify if Jesus went, you went. When he was buried, you were buried. When he rose again, you rose again. Now if you don't see this, then you'll find it difficult to even see yourself as another, call yourself a son. You might see, say son, son, but you don't have any understanding. Okay, let's read. I'm going to draw this a little later. I'm going to read these and then I'm going to draw that, okay? Romans 6, 4. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, he, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. I no longer need to be in this land of hyenas. They own me and they've told me everything. I no longer need to be here. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, knowing that Priya, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over Priya. For the death that he died, that Jesus died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon, meaning see yourself, think of yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in this, of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, so now this is you. You got born again. Okay, you came into the kingdom. Someone told you, you heard the word, and that seed, I've come from my father, that seed that you were appointed before, before the foundations of the world. Someone came, and suddenly something about it popped in you. And you're like, yeah, because Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. My sons know me, because you hung out with him, so you know him. As kids, you know, sometimes people always say that they like Jesus and things, because they came fresh out of heaven. They know there's something that draws them. And then we get brainwashed into other things, okay? And so what happened? Someone came and told you, about Jesus. Let me make this small. Hold on. Okay. Okay. So this was all dead. The minute you got born again, suddenly God comes and starts reciting. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. This happened. Now this mind of yours, the soul, constant, which was destroyed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil, as we read in the Bible, people think I got born again, so shouldn't everything be perfect? This here, this is still black. And it's still filled and destroyed because it was brainwashed by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All your information, everything that you've got is from this tree. And even as you're hearing and hearing, now that the father has come home in you, guess what he's going to do? He's here to take dominion. And now, slowly, he starts writing his word in your heart, his nature in your heart. And this is where your soul is getting born again. Your mind is coming into the dominion of your spirit. To the extent that you allow the spirit to dominate you, you're going to see this in your flesh as well. 
and this and in the natural in the realm that you live in okay it says that we are in this world but not of this world so people get born again they come in but they never do this it's just and then you wonder why things aren't changing because they come in with a god mindset they know they they see him okay jesus is but they come in and they relate to him still as a god and then they're asking and they're praying and they still because we we come from a tradition right like i don't know about you but i came in where i used to worship something and the idea was just like i ask and i get and then mannat you know what mannat is you keep this condition and if you give me this i'll give you one coconut if you don't do this i will give you you know i i used to have all of that and so you can come to that understanding and come in and still do that and have these conditions and still i'm praying praying nothing is happening and you you forget that hello you were a son and you were lost and now you've come back home and he's come to have his nature and dominion and sonship so what part of you is getting son coming out of slave because this this tree of knowledge of good and evil make made man a slave death mindset constantly negative right thinking like i have to work for everything and you are coming in the mind of the son here now see this i'm drawing a chair behind here this part of you in every area of your life is coming into his rest okay do you have another color that part of you don't forget that that's your soul okay their mind is coming into some sort of rest jesus after he went on the cross on your behalf and my behalf rose again and made us sit in every area whether it's your work whether it's your health whether it's your relationships do you know what's happening you're coming into the position of the sun your mind is coming to rest what happened to that lady even as she was casting a case she's taking her position as a sun here this part of this part of you is getting born again that means coming into the identity of a son what is the identity of a son the placement of a son and even as you're coming all things are coming under your feet your body the sickness leaves everything everything is conforming to your spirit man they all are coming into one you understand who is in dominion now this one wants to be in dominion it has to work again like this and so if you get born again and you're still letting your flesh this side rule you and it's a tug that's why it says those who are led by the spirit of god they allow themselves to be dominated you are sons of god what did jesus do for you he it says that you died now for a carnal mind how can you understand that you died but that is a spiritual truth that you died it's all christ in you so if he's come in you the minute you said i become a son he's come in you you don't exist anymore that's why most of the times 99% of the times you are led subconsciously because the bible says the father says that i came and took over your heart i wrote it on you i'm writing all my desires on you i'm causing you to walk in my ways i am doing everything is the flesh there till you have this body the flesh is there it acts up and that's the time when i choose and i dominate and i, I subdue the deeds of the body and that's when i'm allowing myself to be dominated by my spirit man so what part of you is getting saved your mind and what is what is what is it getting saved to it's getting saved to a position of rest okay and even as you're seeding all of the sicknesses all of that is coming under your feet so what do you think the holy spirit is doing so you got born again and now it's not about praying praying to jesus and i get this i get this no he's going to be like uh, the holy spirit has come in you and now he's got a job to do and so as a son if you're praying you're in the old okay there are two let's say there is remember last time i i drew out two things for you adam and second adam okay this is from the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the, we are from the tree of life okay god calls us a natural man and god calls this a heavenly man our origin has changed if you are here this is god and man understanding if you are here you'll understand it's father and son and this is about a family and as a son 
the Holy Spirit has come into you, your job and my job is to co-labor with him. That means where the father is saying, hang on with the older brother. Because I'm here to change you inside out because the hyenas took over you, you're mine. And I feel terrible that you were taken over. How bad is the father going to feel that I want to come and have absolute possession of this soul of yours that was destroyed? And let me have entry there. And how can you let him if you cooperate with him? Okay, and so what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Look at this, 1 Peter 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these promises we become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. When Adam fell, there is a realm that he came into, right? Like Adam fell into a, a realm. Now you've come out, there is also a realm for you. This is life, this is death. Okay, this is the separation where the cross comes and takes you out of one realm and pulls you into we live here, not here. But the Bible says that we're in this world, in this world, but we're not off this world. That means you're still in this, this realm exists, but it's not for me. Because I live, it's, it's like a circle within a circle. I live in another realm altogether within this world. That's why Jesus never identified. He said, you're from here, I'm from above. Your identity and my identity is that of a spiritual identity. We do not go by the flesh. That's why it's very hard for someone because your body keeps doing silly things sometimes. And then if you keep getting your identity from the flesh, that's what most of the church wants to get, get you in, you'll never reign in life. Those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And righteousness is not something you do. It's a gift. That means, and what is it? Righteousness by faith. That means I'm right with God. Holy and blameless just because he said so. These will reign in, in life. That means here. Not in heaven. In here. And what does it mean by reign? That means you're reigning over your sickness. You're reigning over all the things. How is she? She, she spoke to two, three COVID people and they just came out within 48 hours that the doctors had said, no, you won't. But even as she's sitting here, she's waking up. Suddenly, now, has she been a son all this while? Of course she's been. But even as she's waking up to where she is positionally, and now what are her words doing? That everything is coming under her feet. And my very words, now it's not a prayer request. Hello, no, one second, I'm speaking. And to my words, things are obeying me because the spirit realm knows the son is waking up. My God is waking up. How powerful. Now imagine if all sons waking up. What happens? Was it a prayer problem? No. Prayer is needed for this realm. Here, Adam. Praise the Lord. You are a son. You co-labor with the Holy Spirit. All our inheritance is added. How? It says through the precious promises, we become partakers of his divine nature. He's clearly given us how. And so what is the Holy Spirit given? Don't you wonder? It came on Pentecost. What is he doing in you? He's there to take dominion. And to replace that tree of knowledge of good and evil with the tree of life, his nature, in you. And so why did the Holy Spirit come? Verse 8. And we, when he has come, John 16, verse 8, he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in me. That's before you got born again. So he'll tell you that you're a sinner, right? The law was given just to show sin, 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 sin. Hey, you need a savior. Okay? And now of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to the Father and you see me no more. In every area of your life, the way to overcome the problem is through righteousness. What does righteousness mean? Right standing. That means through your sonship. That means taking this position of he is seated. This is your soul or your mind. This is coming into the position of rest in every area for you. You're taking that ground. And even as that, and the Holy Spirit is helping you do that. That's what he's convicting you. That means in every situation he tells you, but you're a son. The world is acting like that, but you're a son. Oh, you got a news that 48 hours he's going to die, but it came to your years, the years of the son. So now your righteousness. So, but it came to the years of the son and now I'll change it. No, he will live. You said it and so it shall be. He's convicting you in every problem of who you are. 
that you're a son, that I don't have to be in the patterns and cycles of this world, this karmic realm. I came out of this. I've come into another realm. I've come into the realm of life. So these patterns and cycles are there, but God pulled me out. Redemption has happened through Christ. And now I've come into another realm. And now I'm going to stay in this realm, plonk myself into this realm, and everything else, get out. <laughs> no. The humans can act like this. Christians can act like that. I'm not a Christian. I never say I'm a Christian. I'm a son. I don't want to identify with any religion. Because no religion Jesus gave. In heaven there's no religion. You and I are sons. The simplicity. He is called the incorruptible seed. An apple seed in the ground, after it dies, will bring forth many apples. If the son went, was buried, and through his death, what is he going to birth forth? Other sons just like him. And that's what you and I are part of the same family. You have to leave aside God mindset and come as father. And if you call him father, you better see yourself like another Christ. That means born again. Born from whose womb? Whose womb? Whose womb? He's the seed. What is he giving birth to? Christ. That's why the devil can't handle. There are too many. And I told you, how does the spiritual realm know one son from another by their position? The more you're still, there are running Jesuses. <laughs> so he knows they don't know. And then there's this one Jesus who's just too still in the storm and is sleeping. Oh, you. Has to bow down and worship you. Okay? That problem will submit to you. I'm telling you, your life is a life of rest. We don't have to do anything. Sin has been dealt with. Jesus died. Don't be obsessed with it. Humble yourself and say, yes, thank you. It's gone to the cross. I'm not going to get my identity from the flesh. Trust me, don't be worried about you live a silly life. Everything in you, my dear, wants to be just like your father. Because you were from him. And you went into the land of hyenas. And now your father has more confidence in you than you have in yourself. He knows it's me in you. Everything in you wants to be good. Trust me, have more faith in your spirit than in your flesh. Okay? And look what he's doing now. Of righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you see me no more, and of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. Who has been judged? The ruler of this world, the devil. That means stop letting him beat you around and telling you that you're a sinner. No, I'm a son. Okay? Because he fears that. Because once the church knows how powerful they are, that God is not obsessed with sin. He's more interested in you reigning in life. He sent his son to die on the cross for your sin. So it's gone away. He's more interested in you. You walk worthy of every blood that his son shed. And not get beat around by the devil so much. And if you know this, oh my God, he's lost his ground. Look what one lady, one Gokumasi did. By just knowing she took down COVID. Hello, I'll change your destiny. That's what she did. Did she send prayer requests, things? No, this one just knows, oops, one second. Now I'm waking up. I will speak it and so shall it be. That's what it is. Okay? I love the testimony of that son picking her up and calling her back home. Two years. This is what I mean, you know? The truth is so good. Like, it's not about prayer. You pray because we don't need to pray much. We need to sit, awake, and things will bow down to you. Look at this. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You cannot bear them now. However, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he speaks, he will speak. Whatever uh, he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. That means what is the Holy Spirit doing? Telling you what belongs to you. Okay? 1 Corinthians 2.13 Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. But this, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Fruits. You know what's happening? So now the Holy Spirit has come, right? So remember in the first one, the spirit had died, the flesh is taking over. And so all your life, you, you're so used to the flesh telling you what to do. The sense realm telling you what to do. And now he comes here now and now starts telling you, don't go by what you're seeing. Now I will tell you. And that's the tug. And that's why the Bible says the just live by faith. 
Adam was supposed to only live because the father said so. You and I, that's our reference point. We only do things and we rest because my father said so. That's my reference point. Not because I see it. You believe it and that's why whole journey is because I said so. And so now the Holy Spirit comes and now is brainwashing you again <laughs> into who you really are, into who you were made to be. And in that, even as you're allowing that spirit to take over, you're going to be fulfilled. Trust me, you know, I still remember seeing in the mirror when I didn't know about Jesus, no one told me and when I was sick, I remember standing in the mirror and I just told myself one thing. I still remember that day. I said, this is not it. This is not it. This is not my life. This is not the way I envisioned it. Something told me, and that time I didn't know Jesus, but something told me this is not it. What was it? It was that seed of the father, and I've got amnesia, and I've forgotten. I'm living in the land of the hyenas. I don't know. And now something is telling me it's not, because that seed still knows. That's why even I was reading the Bible during that time, when I was in my search for God, and I was reading, and I got hold of the Bible, and something in me told me, why do I feel I know this person? Why does it feel like I've hung out? Like, what is it that's telling me I've known this person? It is that seed because you were with him. You were in him before the foundation of the world. And then, of course, I had an encounter and everything changed. But something told me way before that it was always him. And that's what's happening. And now Christ is coming and taking absolute dominion. You're coming into a state of rest. And even as you're following, it says, how, how will you be in health? Even as your soul prospers. You will be in health and you'll be prosperous even by the prosperity of your soul. That means the more this mind of yours is coming into the captivity of the mind of Christ. Come on, let me go and take over. Yeah, you believe what I say. Oh, you're falling sick, you're falling. Yeah, but I say you're a son. It's not in your nature. And now you have a tug. Now you see symptoms. It doesn't matter. Just because you have symptoms doesn't make you a lesser son. You're still a son. Don't lose your identity. Don't let your flesh tell you who you are that's what it means even you can have symptoms in your body and you still choose to say i'm a son it's not in my nature that's what it means i believe my father's words over my body and when you're resting now your soul your mind is coming in that position you'll see one day when that thing just leaves you because it has to submit to the son in you are you understanding these are spiritual truths i'm telling you you are a son the whole spirit realm knows who you are it only submits to a son who is seated. You need to rest. The minute Jesus died, he rose again. It says the father raised him up and seated him at the right hand. He is seated. And so in every area of your life, you're coming in that position of rest. And that's why it says it's a labor to rest. How am I becoming partakers of his divine nature? All through the promises. You have the covenant promises, take the promises. And then you see the promises and now everything comes to take the promise away from you. That's why it says, by faith and patience, we inherit the promises of God. What does patience mean? Patience means endurance in Greek. That means you're holding on. So someone is, I'm saying this and something is coming to tell me, no, you're not it. And even as I'm resting, it's all coming under my feet. Okay? And what is happening? Every trial of yours, you know what's happening? You know, as she shared that testimony of that boss, now she wanted three days pay. And this three days pay was taken away from her. Okay? At some point when the manager wrote something bad, she wanted to give back. But she chose not to. She gave mercy. And do you know that the Bible says, give and it shall be given back abundantly, pressed down, shaken together like a champagne bottle when you open it, will be given back. It's, I'm going to talk about mercy at one point. But she got back so much more. It's because the fruit. You know, the, the Bible says, how do you judge a tree? Judge a tree by the fruit it bears fruits. How is creation going to recognize the sun? By your fruits. I'm telling you, it'll, you're, you're showing mercy, you're showing kindness, you're walking in love, your joy, self-control, patience, oh, rest. Oh. All creation is looking because it was meant to serve us. So that's why you're going to set it free. And do you know that in serving you, you're setting it free? Because it was supposed to do that. It, it gets its fulfillment from that because it was supposed to do that and so you realize how that very boss oh how did this happen is because it's creation is serving the sun okay but be more i'm more interested in the fruits because inheritance and all of these materialistic things the father said i'm not supposed to they follow me 
But the fruits of the Spirit, oh, the Holy Spirit has come and oh, it's a tug, right? But the fruits, by your fruits, it recognizes. Okay? And so I'm going to close there. The simplicity of what that is, right? Sonship, if I got it home to everybody. It is a relationship of father and son. You are in a family and it's a family. So God, the relationship in the old was God and man. Now it's become father and son. And you relate to that father. And I, I pray, but for me, prayer is talking. And I'm more interested in every day of what he's doing in my life. So I just see what is in front of me. And so today I have beloved. Today for me, it was just about going to church. Yesterday it was about preparing the message. And something, and I'm just, he wants me to live in the now because that's how he is. Present. And so I'm not worried about things ahead because he clearly tells me, please don't. And what, what is the reason for please don't? Because you have a father. You're not in the land of hyenas anymore. You're in the kingdom. In the kingdom, everything is finished. I'm more interested in my nature coming into you. My divine nature getting set. This mind that was destroyed by the tree, yeah, I want to take possession of it. And even as I'm resting still, I'm coming back into that relationship with my father. Okay? A son asks, a son receives. When you read the Gospel of John, everything that Jesus says is what you should say. How he identifies with the father is how you identify. Because now all of that has happened. He's ful fulfilled everything. Okay? I just have uh, one or two. Let me just see if I've covered everything. Yeah. So um, I hope I made that simple of sonship. Okay? It's not a religion. It's not Christianity. The simplicity is the we were made, if you're listening to me, you were a son and you were conceived in his heart way before the foundations of the earth. You came in through your mother's womb. You came into this realm, this fallen world, karmic cycle. And then Jesus was sent to redeem us out of it. He went on the cross and he brought us lost sons back home to the father. And now... We are, we are engaging back in that family, taking dominion. That's why Adam was given dominion over the earth, to get it in order. That's what you're doing here. Okay, and what does the son do? In, I think it's in 1 John. Destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. So is the devil here? Yes, he is.